Hi, Larissa here, a very pregnant beekeeper, here to show you how I render my beeswax. This is a part two of a three part video series, how I go from taking comb to solid clean pieces of beeswax ready for candle making um, and other crafts. So the first one, I, I show you how to take the comb that might have honey in it, propolis, bees from the brood and render it to a piece of wax that looks like this. Um, and when the, that wax hardens, it, it's common to have maybe some pieces of stuff like this down underneath it. You're going to want to just take a knife and scrape that off so that your wax looks more like this. You can take a hose and try to rinse off as much as you can but most likely you're still going to have to take a knife and scrape it off you can not do that but you're just going to have more stuff stuck in your strainer and um, it's just going to take longer for it to strain and potentially harden up before it goes through so get as much of, of this junk off as you can so what you're going to need is your wax. I have my slow cooker here and this is different than the crock pot in that you can adjust the temperature. And this is important. I really strongly recommend not using your stove, not putting it on a burner over some kind of flame or heat where you can't control the exact temperature. So right now we are going to set this to, I have it set at 250. Um, you want it under 300. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your wax pieces that are fairly clean. You're going to put them in there. It was so hot out today that they all just melted sitting here on the white table in the afternoon until the sun, it got cloudy enough that I could make a video without my camera overheating. So you're going to put them in here and then you're also going to take some water and put it in. You want about like 50-50 wax to water. Um, it, you don't have to be totally precise about it. I go by volume. So I just look at it and eyeball it and see how high the wax is in the container and fill it up that much with water. If you're not sure, always put a little bit extra water than extra wax because you want to be able to get the wax out um, of whatever container you're harvest you're you're putting it in. So you have your wax and your water heating up at about 250 in here, um, and then once it is all totally melted, what you're going to want to do is take a nice heavy filter. Uh, maple syrup filters can be found online and work really well, which is why I add water to it to thin it out so that it gets through the filter. But a sweatshirt also works. Um, this sweatshirt <laughs> says bride on the back from, you know, when someone got this for me on my wedding day. I wore it that day and never wore it again. <laughs> not exactly much of a use for a bride sweatshirt um, and you want your container you're going to be pouring your wax into this could be a five gallon bucket here's a two and a half gallon bucket is what I'm going to be using you could use something small like this 32 ounce yogurt container uh, you just want to be careful you can use the metal can you can use the different kinds of beeswax cans that you'll find on um, candle making supply sites. You just want it to not melt when you put something that is 200 degrees inside it. You're melting the wax at 250, but by the time it goes through the filter, it's cooling down quite a bit. But that's another reason why you don't want to melt your wax somewhere where you can't control the exact temperature, like on your the burner in your house or outside on some kind of hot plate or something because uh, then you're definitely going to have to use like a metal container you can also use glass um, works fine what you're going to do 
it really just depends on how much wax you have. So if you have a lot of wax, then you're going to want a two and a half or five gallon bucket. If you have just a little bit of wax, then you can use just one of these containers. You take your sweatshirt material, you cut it so it's a little bit bigger than the opening of your container, and you put a rubber band around it so that it looks like this. So I'm going to be using two and a half gallon container so I'm going to take a bigger piece of this sweatshirt. Usually I found that you can use this material uh, a couple times before you throw it away. I get lazy and I don't cut it. It makes it a little bit easier if you cut the material to the size of the bucket but I just um, wrap the whole thing around. Now for the bigger buckets, like this two and a half gallon and the five gallon, they're too big for a rubber band. What I found is the headbands, like this is just a headband to keep your hair back, an elastic one, uh, they work really well. So I just throw the elastic band over my bucket. And it's ready. So once this is all melted, then I will pour this over my sweatshirt and let it go down into my bucket. Once it um, filters down into the bucket, then you're going to wait until it's completely cool and hardened and the wax will harden on the top and the water will be down below. Now, you don't have to add water to this. You can just do pure wax. There are two problems that I've found with not using water. One is that um, sweatshirt material, not always a problem, but with the maple syrup filter, since that is so thick, I can't get just pure wax to go through it. I found that it, the wax is too thick. Um, uh, adding a lot of water to it makes it, it, it will go through it. Sweatshirt material usually isn't too thick and pure wax will go through it, but it's really slow. So if it's a little bit cooler out and your wax is, you might have trouble with your wax melting before it goes through the filter. So I just add some water to it. The other thing is, is that if you're using a container like this, that's heavier duty, your wax is gonna be stuck in here. <laughs> Um, if you're using a container like your yogurt container or um, you can also use a waxed, those waxed um, milk containers, when you're done and this hardens, you can just take your scissors and open this up, throw this away, and you have your piece of wax. But um, if you have a, a larger quantity of wax you're looking to work with you're going to want to add some water to it so that you can pop it out of this bucket with the water in this will pop out um, but without any water it will settle down to the bottom and it'll get stuck in here and then you have to destroy the bucket to get it out so um, this step is not completely necessary if you're not looking to make your wax uh as clean as you possibly can you can just um melt your wax over a t-shirt or some kind of you know thin cotton material use it as a strainer and put it directly into molds and skip this step this middle video isn't completely necessary i've just found that um instead of straining my wax multiple times using a t-shirt instead i just use the sweatshirt or the maple syrup filter and it saves me those extra straining processes also if you're going to make candles the cleaner the wax, the better the candle will burn. It, in theory, they say will burn um, longer and it won't have those little flicks and sizzles in your wick when, um, when your candle has debris and sediment and stuff in it, um, it. It kind of makes this little crackling sound sometimes when it's burning and hits those little pieces. So especially if you're going to be selling your candles, you're, you're going to want your wax to be as clean as possible. Um, if you are using this for body products, you want to take that second, 
you want to just not use, I would say, these plastic containers. I would use metal or glass. And make sure you are using wax that came from a, uh, the hive when it wasn't being treated uh, so that there's no chemicals inside the wax because your skin is porous, beeswax is porous, so the beeswax is absorbing that treatment and then it's going into your body. Um, and then I would take the extra step to filter the wax using the sweatshirt or maple syrup filter for body products because you really don't want that stuff in your body products. You'll find that it actually, when you're making the product and everything's melting, it, it sinks to the bottom. But when you then pour it, it'll go into the jar and doesn't really look so great. So we're gonna let this melt and I'll be back in a couple minutes to pour it over my filter. Okay, so now that everything is totally melted, it's time to pour it into our container with the filter over it. I have an old dress that I don't wear out in public on right now because sometimes this stuff splatters and you don't want to ruin good clothes doing this. Um, I am a little bit more on the messier side, so maybe it's not necessary for you. I'm not going to be pouring a lot of wax, so I just have my 32 ounce yogurt cup with a piece of sweatshirt material on top of that and my rubber band right on top of that. And then I like to push it down a little bit so that there's a little bit of a gap so that when you pour your wax there's room for some to fill up. Now don't forget this is really hot so you can just pick it up and pour it. Uh, it's kind of this part's kind of warm so you might want uh, you know just a rag or something to hold it. I prefer to take this is just a glass mug that I got at a thrift store for like 25 cents and when it's filled up too high I'll just um, dip that in and pour it into my container. And um, just keep on going until it's done. Usually when it's halfway, that's when I'll pick up the rest of this and just pour it into the container the rest of the way. So now it's the next day and everything's cooled and hardened and all you have to do is pop it out. So if you have a smaller container like this, it's just a matter of pushing down on the wax and you can turn sideways, give it a little squeeze and they pop out pretty easily. And the same thing for the bucket, just push down on one side a little bit. You can turn it over and get rid of the water if you want. And there you have your pieces of wax. And that's it. So you can store your wax like this if you want. If you're going to be storing it and not using it immediately, this might be fine uh, because it, it will get dirty in, in storage most likely. But if you're going to be using it right now, or if you want to further clean your wax, there's one more stage to having your wax like very totally clean, perfect for candle making. And that is melting your wax without any water and putting it over a cotton fabric filter. So the link to that video is below in the video description. But if you're going to be storing it and not using it right now, that part of the process is not necessary. Um, wax is really tacky and so it's, it's going to get stuff stuck to it. If you're storing it in your house and you live somewhere cold, it might be fine and, and it might stay clean. But um, like here in Hawaii, cockroaches everywhere, they love to eat wax. Um, no, it doesn't matter. I have it in plastic bins with a pretty good seal in plastic bags and Ziploc bags and Ziploc bags. 
they get to everything inside the house outside the house in the shed doesn't matter where so um i'll store them in big blocks the bigger the block um the less eaten up by little critters and that is the second part to cleaning your beeswax don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified when we have more beeswax beekeeping honey harvesting videos out